द बुक ऑफ रेवल्यूशन अ प्रैक्टिकल आउटलाइन कुड बी प्रोलोग फ्रॉम चैप्टर वन वर्सेज वन टू एट एंड इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द बुक इज फ्रॉम चैप्टर वन वर्सेज वन टू थ्री एंड एपिसपो epistolary prescript is from chapter 1 verses 4 to 6 two prophetic saying is verses 1 verses 7 to 8 visionary report is from chapter 1 verses 9 to chapter 22 verses 5 john's inaugural vision and commission in chapter 1 verse 9 and to chapter 3 verses 22 and audit an audition and vision of the risen christ chapter 1 verses 9 to uh, 20 seven letters to the seven churches of asia chapter 2 verses 1 to chapter 3 verses 22 ephesus smyrna pergamum thyatira sardis philadelphia and laodicea john's first cycle of visions in the spirit from chapter 4 verse 1 to chapter 11 verse 19 Worship in the heavenly court is for uh, verse uh, 1 to 11 scroll the lion of judah and the lamb ver- ver- chapter 5 verse 1 to 14 the seven seals are chapter 6 verses 1 to chapter 8 verses 5 the first four seals are chapter 6 verses 1 to 8 the fifth and the sixth seal is chapter 6 verses 9 to 17 two interrupting visions are uh, the 144000 israelites sealed by god chapter 7 verses 1 to 8 the countless gentiles which are robed in white chapter 7 verses 9 to 17 The seventh seal and the angel with a golden censer is chapter eight verses one to five. The seven angels with the seven trumpets. The first four trumpets, uh, chapter eight verses two to twelve, and the uh, fifth and the sixth trumpet, chapter eight verse thirteen, chapter nine verse one to twenty one. The two interrupting uh, visions are an angel with a small scroll, ten one to eleven, temple and the two witnesses, eleven one to fourteen. Seventh trumpet is eleven fifteen to nineteen. John's second cycle of visions in the spirit, chapter twelve verses one to chapter twenty two verses five. Seven symbolic visions, past, present, and future, chapter twelve verse one to chapter fifteen verse four. Women, child, and the dragon, chapter twelve verses one to seventeen. First beast from the sea, chapter thirteen verses one to ten. Second beast from the earth, chapter thirteen verses eleven to eighteen. Lamp and the one forty four thousand. Chapter fourteen verses one to five and the three angels with messages. Chapter fourteen verses six uh, to thirteen. Final harvest and vintage. Chapter fourteen verses fourteen to twenty. The victory song of Moses and the lamp. Chapter fifteen verses two to four. Seven angels with the seven plagues. Chapter fifteen verse one five to chapter nineteen verse ten. The seven angels are chapter fifteen verses one to eight and the seven bowls. Chapter sixteen verses one to twenty one. Elaboration of the destruction of the Babylon chapter seventeen verse one to nineteen uh, ten. War on the scarlet beast is Rome uh, chapter seventeen verses one to eighteen. The fall of Babylon, Rome's destruction chapter eighteen verses one to twenty four. Rejoicing in heaven chapter nineteen verses one to ten. The seven visions of the last thing chapter nineteen verse eleven to chapter twenty two verse uh, five. Coming of Christ and the word of God chapter nineteen verses eleven uh, to sixteen. Invitation to a great banquet, chapter nineteen, verses seventeen to eighteen. The final battle, chapter nineteen, verses nineteen to twenty-one. Binding of Satan, chapter twenty, verses one to three. Millennium a- uh, reign, chapter twenty, verses four to ten. Final judgment, chapter twenty, verses eleven to fifteen. The new heaven and new earth and new Jerusalem, chapter twenty-one, verses one to eight. Elaboration on the new Jerusalem, chapter twenty-one, verses nine to chapter twenty-two, verses five. Finally, the epilogue, chapter twenty-two, verses six to twenty-one. The collection of short prophetic saying, chapter twenty-two, verse uh, six to twenty, and an uh, epistolary uh, benediction, chapter twenty-two, verses twenty-one. This is a spiritual message in uh, Revelation. Revelation is as an apocalyptic book. It is full of images that have long history, stretching from the ancient Near Eastern myth through the Old Testament prophet to the Jewish apocalypse, like the Book of Daniel. Some images in Revelation might also evoke Greek mythology, which would be familiar to the readers from the consistent use of such themes in the decorative arts. The apocalypse Greek word for Revelation, from Daniel at the end of the Old Testament to Revelation, the end of the New, and even beyond the time of Revelation, we have a wide variety of such visionary writings from Jewish and Christian circles. Read Daniel seven to twelve. Much of the imagery in Revelation it derives from Daniel and from the imagery of the Old Testament prophets. These chapters of Daniel also contain series of visions the course of the world history. Cycles of the visions overlap and provide alternate pictures of the same events. Revelation uses cycles of visions in the same way.
Daniel and Revelation are both addressed to community suffering persecution. When Daniel was written, the Syrian ruler of Palestine had been trying to force the people to renounce Judaism. Many who refused were put to death. The reflection on the significance of their martyrdom led to a theology of martyrdom. The blood of these martyrs was seen in expiation of the sins of those Jews who had not remained faithful to their religion. Theology of martyrdom played an important role in early Christian understanding of the death of Jesus. His blood was seen in expiation for the sins of the whole world. Revelation presents to us with the picture of Jesus, the faithful martyr, just as Antiochus failed to wipe out Judaism, so the new imperial beast, Rome, will fail to destroy the Christian faithful. Image of... Uh, one like a son of who is ascending uh, to god's throne above is uh, jesus uh, christ and this uh, uh, revelation is uh, applying this image uh, to christ and jesus is revealed uh, as a heavenly son of man in the opening verses of in the book though the images and the themes of revelation stream to us in these parallel examples show that they were well known at the time the book was written The author does not use the tradition of symbolic language and has the evils of Babylon stand for the evils of the Roman Empire. Identity of the author, Christian prophet named John on the island of Patmos. The author and his situation. The author does not identify himself as an evangelist. In fact, he even refers the, to the apostles as a separate group from the past. Chapter 18 verses 20 and 21 uh, verses 14. We recognize the church has included this writing in scripture because it does contain an authentic and important vision of Christian faith. Revelation opens with seven very... stylized uh, letters to the churches in the cities in asia minor all the seven letters are intended to instruct the christian not just those in particular churches christians in asia minor were able to understand the symbolic illusions had become lax lost interest in testifying to their faith others were being led astray by false christian teachers and prophets A reference to the synagogue of satan those who claim to be jews are but are not uh, difficult to interpret some scholars think that the jewish population of the cities mentioned were responsible for the persecution of christians while others suggest that christians were trying to avoid suspicion and persecution by claiming to be jewish visions show us faithful christians who are liable to persecution and sometimes martyrdom for failure to worship the emperor Tradition associates revelation with the period of the emperor Domitian who was assassinated in AD 96. He had emphasized the monarchical side of imperial office and ruthlessly executed those in his own circles whom he suspected of disloyalty. His assassination was greeted with outbursts of violence against his statutes. The emperor worship meant putting the emperor in the place that we reserve to for God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and 10 Paul exhorts the Christian not to compromise their faith in Romans 13 verse 1 to 7. Paul tried to deal with the question of Christian loyalty to the political order. Christians know that all authority is based in God and Jesus' return will soon bring human authority to an end. They should still obey those in power since those their role is to see that good is promoted and evil is punished. 1 Peter 2 uh, verses uh, 12 to 17 echoes the same sentiment Christians are instructed to honor the emperor. John in Revelation makes it clear that there is a big difference using language about the emperor as though he were god or participating in ritual that honored him as such was equivalent to denying that one is a christian that is equivalent to joining forces with satanic power theology of revelation uh, it uh, addresses serious questions about how christians are to live in a larger and more often hostile society modern context newspapers reveal harassment and even murder of those opposed governmental op- operation name of christian love and concern for the poor perplexing cases like governments of so called christian country seem to promote policies of oppression that run directly counter to ethical teachings of christianity Revelation speaks about such experiences. It also warns us against the temptation to be silent or look the other way in the presence of evil and injustice. Revelation insists that no Christian is immune from the obligation to bear witness no matter what. Revelation should lead us to resist the kind of pessimism that looks at the vastness of the evil in the world and decide that any effort to change things would be a waste of time. Revelation not a book aimed at scaring Christians into being good. It is a book to encourage them in the face of the most awful shape that evil can assume. when it takes on all the trappings of divine imperial power when it is also has the force of local opinion behind it it is the faithful few who share the victory that christ death has won over evil the structure of revelation is a complex one many scholars think that the author put together vision accounts that were originally separate the broad skeleton of the book seems to be built on the series of seven used to uh, organize uh, the vision cycles the visions are presented as the contents of two scrolls first opened by the lamps which uh, dominates in the chapters uh, 5 to 10 and the other eaten by the prophet which covers chapters 11 to 22 the second half of the book also has a dualistic uh, axis embodied in the struggle between god and satan 
which is presented as the contrast between the two cities babylon that is rome and jerusalem so the outline of the book is uh, chapter 1 verses 1 to 8 is a prologue with a preface with a pre- one uh, no, to three verse and a prescript and sayings verses 4 to 8 then we have a uh, 9 to uh, 322 are the seven letters uh, four one to eight uh, five are uh, seven seals eight uh, two to 11 19 we have the seven trumpets 12 1 to 15 four we have the unnumbered visions 15 5 to 16 21 we have the seven bowls the babylonian interlude is 17 1 to 19 10 19 11 to 21 uh, 8 is the unnumbered visions jerusalem interlude is 21 9 to 22 5 and then 22 6 to 20 is the epilogue and the sayings uh, of verses 6 to 20 and the benediction verse 21 Prologue of Revelation is chapter one verses one to eight. Prologue has two parts. First is the titular introduction to the book of Revelation as a whole, verses one to three, and second is the introduction to the first section, that is the letters to the seven churches, verses four uh, to eight. Chapter one verses one to three. He did this uh, revelation. The opening words of the book are the revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation here does not refer to any sort of uh, divine inspiration. It means knowledge of how the world will stand under God's judgment when history comes to an end. Revelation seeks to correct the Christians who are confused about what is required for salvation. The message in Revelation is both a message from Jesus to his churches and from God about the coming judgment. The seven letters are tied to a vision of Jesus as the heavenly son of man. This vision which follows the letters uh, introduces angelic mediators who interpret what John sees. Such angels are a common feature of Jewish apocalypses. So we are all called to become like Jesus. The promise to show what must happen soon verses 1 reappears at 22:6 and in 22:16 Jesus is the one who sends the angels similar promises to reveal what will happen in the last days appears in Daniel 2 verse 28 and 45 there what is what is to happen refers to the destruction of human empires and the establishment of the eternal rule of god verse 2 pronounces a blessing on all who read hear and heed the message revelation is to be read aloud in the liturgical assembly and is addressed to all also in 22:7 These beatitudes may reflect uh, in uh, Luke 11:28 Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Revelation contains only beatitudes outside the gospels. 7 1 to 3 14 13 16 15 19 9 26 uh, and 22 7 and 14. The other refer to the blessings of salvation. Verse 2 has two words testimony and witness. Verse 9 suggests that John was exiled to Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Revelation 1 verses 4 to 8 is a message to the churches. John is the mouthpiece of God and Jesus. Grace and peace was a common early Christian greeting for the opening of a letter. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all is Revelation 22:21. God is described as the one who is and who was and who is to come, Alpha and Omega. The seven spirits before the throne use Jewish liturgical image, images. Interpretation are the seven archangels, seven eyes of God, Zechariah 4:10 or the seven lights. The faithful witness may refer to all of Jesus' testimony and not simply his death. First born of the dead refer to Jesus' resurrection. Doxologies and hymns of praise are an important part of the prophetic insight of Revelation. They teach Christians that they already know they owe God their thanks and also for their victory and salvation. They do not have the to wait until the final destruction of all evil Uh, for victory the two prophetic sayings first is a combination of daniel 7 13 and zechariah 12 10 early christians used this saying as a judgment oracle against those who reject jesus matthew 24 30 and john 19 37 second sayings remind the hearer that this revelation comes from the one who is truly god Revelation uses the image alpha and omega the first and the last letters of the greek alphabet for both god and christ 1 17 2 8 21 6 22 13 13 the almighty is a divine title 4 8 11 17 15 3 16 7 14 19 6 15 21 22 it sets god off as a king against the power claimed by the emperor in the last later visions the liturgical imagery of this section makes it clearer from the beginning that this revelation comes from all the authority of god let us to the churches revelation 1 9 to 3 22 Revelation 1 9 to 20 is a prophetic call vision. The first vision of Jesus in Revelation commissions the prophet to write to the churches in Asia Minor. 
John's prophetic call is somewhat different from the Old Testament call stories. The Christian prophet is primarily a witness to the message from the risen Jesus. Jesus is pictured as the one standing over against a wavered people with the words of judgment or consoling the faithful with those of promise. The prophet makes it clear that he is a member of the community to which this revelation is addressed. Distress, the kingdom and the endurance present the condition for Christian salvation. Endurance is a special term in the New Testament. It means more than just putting up with hardship, enables people to remain faithful right through the end. Patmos was a small poor island, no city on it. John makes it clear that his witness has led to this banishment there. He does not explain the situation further, since the Christian Asham are probably familiar with the circumstance. The voice of God appears as a trumpet in the Old Testament, that is Ezra 3.12. Exodus 19.16, a trumpet call was to signal the end of the world, 1 Thessalonians 4.16. The number 7, which is primarily numerologically symbol, symbolic in Revelation, some ancient authors would see the 7 at the 7 planets. The Roman emperor would be portrayed as holding 7 stars as symbol of his universal dominion. The image of Jesus holding 7 stars uh, provides a symbolic challenge to that claim of authority. He is the ruler of the cosmos. He, in the immediate context, 7 refers to churches to which the letters are addressed in verse 20. This image uh, combines the son of man who takes a throne in Daniel 7, 13 and 14, revealing angel in Daniel 10, 5 and 6. Jesus is presented as an angelic heavenly being, source of revelation, one who has dominion over the world. The sword in the mouth of the figure probably refers to the sword of the word of God in Isaiah 49 2. He receives the titles of God first and last, the one who lives. He merits these titles because of his death and resurrection. The continuing theme in Revelation is a paradox of the death and life. Jesus died and now lives. Some interpreters try to argue that the angels of the churches refer to the bishops of those communities. The letters never suggest that they are directed towards some specific church leaders. Revelation thinks about the angelic guardians of those churches. Another feature of Revelation is the truth of external earthly events is found in the action of heaven which initiates them. The letter pattern. It provides a prophetic evaluation and critique and encouragement. Each letter follows a pattern. Command to write prophetic messenger formula with a description of Jesus as the sender. And thirdly, I know section. It includes some of the following elements. I know that plus the description of the situation. Secondly, but I have it against you. And then the censure. And the third is command to repent. And the fourth is look. And the prophetic saying. And then the uh, fifth is promise. The Lord is coming soon. And sixth is exhortation to hold fast. The fourth point is a call to hear and the fifth is a promise of reward to those who are victorious. These letters do not give us much information about the problems in the church of Asia Minor. They speak in a cryptic way about a situation that were familiar to the original audience. Their message is a prophetic warning that Christians must take care lest they lose the salvation that Christ has won for them. To summarize the book of Revelation, we can have uh, three parts. The first part is the things which you have seen, personal and biographical. The chapters 2 to 3 are the things which are Christ's letters to the seven churches. And the third part from chapter 4 to 22, the things which will take place, Revelation 1, 19. Christ as judge, chapters 4 and 5, the tribulation, chapter 6 to 18, the coming of Christ, chapter 19, the millennium, chapter 20, and the eternal stay, chapter 21 and 22. The scope of the first two parts is the history looking back, whereas the second part, the things that which will take place, is the prophecy looking ahead. The style of the first two parts are dialogue, whereas the, the part of the things to take place is observation and questions. The scene on the first two parts is on the earth, whereas the scene in the last part is shifts between earth and heaven. The theme in the entire book is Christ's future triumph over the forces of evil and his recreation of the world for the redeemed. Key verses are 1, 7, 19, 22, 12 to 13. Christ in Revelation is coming King of Kings and Lord of Lords who will return as Judge and King to usher in the Kingdom of God on earth. Chapter 19 verse 11 to chapter 20 verse 6. Let us look at the seven churches. We have Ephesus. The good thing is known for their hard work and perseverance. Do not tolerate wicked men who claim to be apostles but were not and they hated the Nicolaitans. The bad thing is they forsake their first love. The church, uh, second one is Smyrna. The good points are withstood uh, poverty and afflictions, withstood slander from those who claim to be Jews but were a synagogue of Satan and forced to suffer. The bad points are chap uh, verse 1 and 2 sound like some churches in Paul's day. The third church is Perganum. The good thing is they hold the true to Jesus' name even when one member was put to death. 
The bad thing it was the city where Satan lived and had the throne. Some held the teachings of uh, Balaam eating food sacrificed to idols and sexual immorality. Some held the teachings of the Nicolaitans. The third uh, and the fourth uh, ch- church is Tiatira. The good points are known for their love, faith, service and perseverance. The bad thing, some tolerated the false prophecy Jezebel who misled some into eating food sacrificed to idols and sexual immorality. This uh, three and flow blended uh, pagan festivals and uh, rituals into Christianity, the dark ages. The fifth church is Sardis. The good points were some were found worthy. But the bad thing, they had the reputation for being alive but were really dead. Their deeds were not complete. The sixth church is Philadelphia. The good points endured with little the strength and kept Christ's word and not denying his name. Those who claim to be Jews will be forced to bow down and acknowledge Jesus' love for them. They endure patiently and will be kept from the hour of uh, trial. Five and six uh, sound uh, like uh, some modern church groups of today. The seventh group is uh, good deeds are the good points and bad things. They are lukewarm about uh, to be spat out. They are rich and think they don't need anything from Jesus, but they are mistaken. So these are the seven churches. Ephesus, the loveless church. Mirna, the lasting church. Perganum, the lenient church. Tiatira, the licentious church. Sardis, the lifeless church. Philadelphia, the loved church. And Laodicea, the lukewarm church. Here we have the map of the seven churches of Revelation, Ephesus, Smyrna, Sardis, Philadelphia, Tiatira, Pergamum, and Laodicea. As we can see, the summary of the entire book, chapter 1, is John's vision of the resurrected uh, Jesus, John the Beloved and Exiled at Patmos Island. Then chapter 2 to 3 is uh, Jesus' letter to the seven churches of Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Pergamos, uh, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea. Then chapter 4 and 5 with a glimpse of Jesus on the throne in heaven. The doors of heaven open, God the Father, powerful creator, Jesus the Son, loving redeemer. Chapters uh, 6, the seven seals, uh, the white horse, the red horse, black horse, pale horse, the persecution, the judgment day, the sealing, the uh, 144,000, the great multitude, silence in heaven. Then chapters uh, 6 to 11, 19, 19, the seven uh, trumpets where hell and fire, burning mountain, the sea becomes blood, the sun, moon and stars uh, fall off, the plague of locusts, the plague of... Uh, Horsemen, angels and little uh, scroll, the two witnesses, the kingdom proclaimed. Chapter 12 to 13. Jesus and his uh, war with the dragon. The birth of Jesus, the dragon, Satan, the sea beast, who is the Antichrist and the false prophet. Chapters 14 to 15. We have Jesus and the end times harvest. Jesus and his church angel uh, uh, come as uh, reapers and the end time harvest. Next chapter 16 are the seven bowls, boils, sea becomes blood, rivers become blood, the great uh, ha- heat from the sun, darkness, the Euphrates dries up and st- storm and hail. Chapter 17 and 18 is the judgment of Babylon, the woman on the, on the beast, the mystery of the woman and the fall of Babylon. Chapter 19, the second coming of Jesus, the marriage of the lamp, the second coming and the war with the beast. Chapter 20, The Millennium, The Great White Throne, The Book of Life Opened, Satan Cast into Hell. Chapter 21, 22, Heaven, The New Heaven, New Earth and Eternity. 